Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. I feel the spirit alive and well in this worship service. It is going to be a wonderful worship service. Today we get to celebrate our seniors. It's one of my favorite Sundays and all the accomplishments that they have done. A few announcements before we get started. VBS and SMAC are rapidly approaching. If you would like to donate a casserole or a breakfast treat for VBS for the volunteers, please check your connection card and I will reach out to you this week and find out what you would like to donate. And Hannah has a special SMAC announcement. Yes, we are so pleased to be able to offer SMAC this summer. Our summer music and arts camp for kids will take place from June 20th to 24th, the same time as VBS, but it's in the afternoon. Um, it's a camp for second through sixth graders where they get to engage in all kinds of musical endeavors. They'll sing, they'll play handbells, they'll do art, they'll do drama, and they put on a musical at the end of the week. Um, it's just a really fun camp and you have a week left to register. Uh, so I hope to see your kids there. Thank you. A couple other logistical announcements for our worship service today. The prayer of confession is a little bit different. We are going to say the prayer together and then we're going to sing a little bit. And then we're going to say the prayer together and then sing a little bit. So I just don't want you to get confused when we're, when we're doing that. Also, we are in for a treat today. We are going to be blessed by our exaltation choir before we leave. So I would ask that you stand for our benediction response today as the choir sings over you. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Thank you. 
Please stand as you are able. The disciples gathered in quiet, and then a breeze started blowing, and quickly the wind picked up into a mighty roar, filling the space. And their hair got ruffled and wondered what was going on. And the spirit, like little flames, danced above their heads. And they all started talking in all sorts of languages. It was not quiet or peaceful, but... In the midst of the confusion of our lives, God is here too. Let us worship God. All right, you heard it. It was not quiet. It was loud and strange. From the earth to the sky, let it rise, let it rise. From the dark into light, now alive, now alive. We are here to lift you up, here to sing a song of love, here to give you, God, what you are. As we come to God in prayer, let us open ourselves to the presence of the Spirit to bring to our souls the freshness of mercy and grace. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we confess that we forget what it's like to be patient. We demand instant results. We find ourselves neglecting the needs of others because we are overwhelmed with everything we have to do in our lives. Gracious God, we persistently make self-centered decisions rather than Christ-centered ones. We do not understand how good and faithful you are to us and how our faith is weakened and our discipleship lacks credibility.
Merciful God, in this aggressive world, it's easy to believe that one has to use harsh words towards others and violence to achieve one's goal. We think we can't get anywhere by exercising a spirit of gentleness or even self-control. Forgiving God, forgive us for sin. Fill us with your love so that we may truly care for one another. Refresh and renew us with the Holy Spirit so that we may be witnesses of your amazing love to the world. In this holy space, tell God when you have pushed away the nudging of God's spirit in your life. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God's Spirit did not leave us after that first Pentecost. The Spirit is still with us, empowering us to know mercy and grace and forgiveness and service. In this Spirit and through Christ, we proclaim the good news we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love is As Christ Jesus has shared his peace with each of us, let us now share the peace with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you.
today we are celebrating the journey that you are being called to this week. That will take your faith to a whole new place. As we send you forth, I have a few questions. Will you be a faithful in your participation on this trip? There's more to the question. You got to hear what you're promising first. All right, here we go. Seeking to build Christian community among fellow students and your chaperones. Remaining attentive to both the agenda of the trip and to the spontaneous intervention of God's surprising spirit. Bearing witness to the love, compassion, and justice of Jesus Christ wherever you go. Will you? They got excited. They're ready. (laughs) Will you hold these students and chaperones in prayer? Keeping them close in your awareness and surround them with the love of God while they are away. Will you? I would invite those who are kind of sitting close to the edge, if you would like to come and lay a hand on a student or a chaperone, we have Andrew's going and Michael's going, and Katie Schnitker is way in the back, so if there's someone over by Katie who wants to lay a hand on her, and we will bless them before they leave this week. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, provider of the gifts that give us each a unique identity in Christ, we give thanks for the willingness of these students and chaperones to use their gifts to serve you. This is not just another trip with another group, but a holy trip, a set-apart trip, because you are calling them to something bigger this week. You are calling them to be a witness of your love, to all those who they will encounter on this trip. We pray that you would mold the hearts of each student and chaperone so that they are faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Surround them with your protection as they travel. Use their hands, feet, and voices to spread your good news to the world. May they sense your presence every step of the journey. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Please pray with me. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is from Romans 12, verses 4 through 8. Listen to the word of the Lord. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, the encourager, encouragement, the giver and sincerity, the leader and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. morning. So when I was volunteering myself, I decided to write a piece about how grace and how my faith has helped me through the most troubling times of my life. So in 2014, my first church family in Texas was unfortunately closed. And I was in fourth grade And I was confused because a church had never closed in my life before and I didn't know that could happen. So I looked to my mom and I looked to my dad and I was like, where are we gonna go? Because I wanted to continue going to church. So we decided to look. The first church we went to was this massive church with huge doors and 
really, really big band and a lot of people there, and it was just a lot of noise. And I liked it because it was a really big children's section too, and I got to play with all these cool toys, but it wasn't right. Well, thank the Lord. The second place we found was Grace. And when I got there, I was like, this is definitely a smaller environment, but it felt closer in a way. And it felt more safe to me. And when I sat down, the choir was singing that morning. I was like, that is so cool. I want to do that. And so I looked to my mom and I was like, I want to stay here. So we did. And I'm really happy we did. Through the next couple of years, I got to discover the children's program, and I got to discover the Exaltation Choir, which is, I was always really excited about. And I got to discover that we go on choir tour, and I think that is the closest time I feel with God, because I get to experience an amazing time with really, really cool people, but I also get to serve people that might not be having the best of days. And when I see the absolute joy that people get on choir tour when they just, their faces light up and they are amazing in their response to our gifts and to our message of God. And it's amazing. And then COVID happens. And unfortunately we weren't able to go on our 2020 choir tour. And that really upset me because that's always something I look forward to. But I had my church family, and I still had choir somewhat, and so I was able to move forward. And then unfortunately, my mom wasn't able to come see me worship every morning because she had to go and preach somewhere else. That was very disappointing for me because I love my mom coming to see me worship, and I love my dad coming to see me worship, but Sometimes it just doesn't work. And that was hard. But one thing I've learned through my years of coming here and singing for you guys is that God will always find a way. So today, my mom was lucky enough to be able to come and I'm really happy about that. And my dad's up there too. I've learned through my years of grace that sometimes I might not always agree with how my brothers and sisters in Christ will sometimes view the Bible or interpret it. And that's okay because we all have different interpretations of how each specific word was meant to be written. But we all believe in one true God and one true faith. And I think that's the most important thing I believe that my faith has helped me for the better because I have a lot of friends that can help me when I'm in trouble and a lot of friends that can help me when I am in need of counseling. And I have Pastor Kara and I have Pastor Tracy and I have all of my youth leaders and I have Michael and everyone else here. And I'm really happy that I was able to come to Grace even if my first church family died, I have this one now. And I'm really happy to say that this is probably one of the best decisions I ever made. And this year in particular was a struggle because it was my senior year and I realized that I won't be able to do choir tour anymore I'm not a youth anymore, and there's a lot of responsibilities with being an adult. And adulting is hard. <laughs> like there's so many, there are so many things you have to take care of. But as long as I have a couple constants in my life, I think I'll be able to take care of it. And church is one of those constants that I believe I'll be able to keep because I can't be in the youth choir anymore, but hey, there's an adult choir. So overall, I think that my faith has helped me learn that 
even if my own life is a mess and I can't exactly handle it all at once, I can give up some of my struggles to God and I can give up some of my struggles or at least have them lean on the people around me and I think that's what matters. You may be seated. Our second scripture lesson is from Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. Listen to the word of the Lord. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deeper water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When I first heard this when I was younger, I always pictured these really smart old guys that were speaking like King James English to each other. And it was all just like really proper. And then like one day something weird happens. So one of these really smart guys gets a little upset. And then Jesus says something comforting. Everything's fine. Yay, the end, on to the next thing. But as I've gotten older, I've realized how incredibly wrong my interpretation was. In reality, Simon was a fisherman's son, only about 17 or 18, and nowhere near qualified by our standards to be a disciple of the Son of God. But one day when he's struggling, Jesus helps him, and he feels his presence for the first time, and it terrifies him. But what sticks out to me in this chaotic scene is how Jesus responds. Do not be afraid, for from now on you'll be catching people. What my brain defaults to when I hear the phrase, do not be afraid, is one of those pictures of Jesus like holding a little child and comforting them, telling them everything's going to be okay. But when you look at the dialogue, it's really not what he's doing. He's doing the opposite. In the midst of Simon's panic, Jesus commands him to have this radical career change and to go follow him and leave everything. All Simon wanted was to provide for his wife and follow in his father's footsteps, but this isn't what he was allowed to do. This use of do not be afraid was not a reassurance, but a commandment. But with this, a whole new issue arises. Clearly, Simon gets scared pretty easily. He's a fisherman who freaks out when he sees a bunch of fish. Um, And through other accounts, (laughs) we realize that there were three other disciples there who Jesus did choose, but none of them were chosen to be the rock on which he built his church. So out of these four men, he chooses the one on the ground having kind of a panic attack or something. And... (laughs) It seems like he isn't the best choice. But, and if we read the rest of the Gospels, we realize that Peter does this pretty often. He walks on water, but he looks down and he gets scared. So he falls and he freaks out. He wants to follow Jesus when he's arrested, but he gets scared and denies him and then cries and freaks out. And it's just this common theme, but something changes. When Jesus descends and ascends again, he leaves his spirit with everyone, including Peter. And now Peter is the first to speak at Pentecost. He is the first to boldly heal a man in Jesus' name. And he writes First and Second Peter, which are books against denying Jesus in a society where it could and did get him killed. Simon Peter was not called because he could do anything. He was called because Jesus knew what he could do through him. And when we look in the Old Testament, we see the same thing with Jacob. Jacob is this really questionable guy who steals his brother's birthright and tries to trade it for a cup of soup. But he does trade it for a cup of soup. And this shows that his brother Esau did not really care about his birthright. He didn't care about leading God's people, but Jacob did. So even though Jacob had all of his own issues... All that mattered was that he had this passion for everything he did. The Hebrews call it chutzpah, and it's usually a pride in oneself. But in Jacob's case, it's a pride in what God does through him. And so with the start of his nation and the start of his church, God wants this same passion. I was privileged enough to be able to serve on session as the youth elder in 2021. Less than a month into my term, an emergency session meeting was called because hundreds of thousands of gallons, of, or no, just hundreds of gallons of water had flooded the sanctuary. And as much life experience as I had at 16, I wasn't <laughs> that good about knowing like which loans to take for like which contractor and who to pay for what and to do it where, I didn't know. But as I sat in these session meetings, I saw so many miracles be worked through all the adults around me. One meeting in particular really stands out to me um, because this one man who had done incredible things um, for the sanctuary and was heavily involved confessed a problem that he had. Um, He had been getting so much credit for everything. Everyone was referencing him as who did it, but he didn't want it because as qualified as he was and as hard as he had worked, the work was God's, not his, and that will never leave me. 
through Grace, I have had several pastors, um, both over the youth, um, associate pastors, head pastors, everything. And I've been through the youth group and the youth choirs uh, six times with six different groups as people move on and come in. And it's become so apparent to me that it's not individuals that matter. It's God moving through them because no matter what changes, God has the same spirit and he always moves. And so as God furthers his kingdom, he seeks the same quality he found in Jacob and Peter just for a passion for what he does. Thank you to everyone who has let God show me this through them. Come to this table where bread and cup are transformed by the Spirit of God into a meal of love and of grace, a table where all are welcome. Let us pray. Creator, before the earth was formed, the Spirit of God swirled through voids and shadows. God, you breathed life into humans, filling them with the very air of God. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. For your air continues to fill us up when our bones are dry and our spirits are sluggish. Redeemer, you are the giver of peace that surpasses all understanding. We come to you because you first called to us. We praise you for your word of eternal life that breathes us out as your disciples to share your love with the world. Sustainer, we invite your spirit to blow through our lives and the world as we pray for the needs that surround us. We pray for those who have lost faith, for those who have come ungrounded in their lives, who see nothing but hopelessness around them, who feel distant from you, O oh God. We pray for those who face challenge, for those whose health is failing them, who find money to be an obstacle, who suffer oppression and injustice. We pray for those who live apart from you, for those who do not show love freely and abundantly, who act selfishly or who hurt others by their actions or by their inaction. We pray for those who have suffered at the hands of senseless violence, for the families grieving in Tulsa, for the families grieving in Uvalde, for the families grieving in Buffalo, for the families grieving in Russia and Ukraine, and for the families who remain nameless and faceless to us, but who too have been affected by the violence of others. Now, as people gathered in your name, we pray that you would make your presence known to us. Holy Spirit, as you have done before, breathe your breath of life through this place, making this simple loaf and cup be communion with you. May this meal give us a much needed second wind in our own lives to show compassion towards others, and to spur us on to share your love with the world. This we pray, saying the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup 
And he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do proclaim our risen Lord and Savior until he comes again. For he is coming again. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, we are blessed to have three stations for communion. So if you come, as you're coming forward, if the first station has somebody at it, you're welcome to go to the second station. If that station has somebody at it, you're welcome to go to the third station. If they're all three filled, you have to wait. I don't know what to say. Um, and then gluten-free will be in the middle for those who need it. Our friends in the balcony, you're invited to come down and come through the center aisle as well. Will the servers please come forward? you need for someone to bring the bread to you, I would be happy to bring it to you. Just raise your hand and I'll make sure that you receive communion. We want everybody to come to the table and be fed. So come and be fed. The table is ready.
Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, may we overflow with thanksgiving for who you are, all you have done and all you have yet to do. May we remember the taste of this meal in our mouths, how nourishing and sweet it is in both good and difficult times. With your breath in our lungs, you have prepared us to be your witnesses in this world. Amen. I'd like to invite all the high school seniors to come forward. This group is a particularly special group to me. They were all in fifth grade when I started at Grace. And now they're all seniors, and I couldn't be more proud of each one of them. They have grown in amazing ways. And today we get to celebrate you. We celebrated you at your baptisms. We celebrated with you when you received your fourth grade Bibles. We celebrated with you when you confirmed your faith. And today another milestone in your life, your high school senior year. It may feel in this moment like everything is changing, like you're saying goodbye to everything. Goodbye to teachers, goodbye to friends, goodbye to your school, maybe even a little goodbye to your church. But it isn't really a goodbye. Our relationship with you doesn't end today, but it is shifting into something new. You will continue to feel God's spirit nudging you forward in your journey to grow into the person God is calling you to be, the person God is knitting you into being. You are still so important to us, though. We will keep praying for you. All of us will keep praying for you. We will keep supporting you however we can. We are here to listen always if you ever need a listening ear. We are loving you, even though you are not physically with us. While things are different, and some of your most treasured relationships at this point may fizzle away, God is always with you. You are never alone. God is breathing new life into you while wrapping you with a never-ending love. As a church, we would like to give you a gift that will help you continue to grow in your faith, that will continue to help guide your prayer life. Brady Owens, Connor Hicks, Sophia Maybrinata, Sarah Davis, Lily Goodwin, Jake Bowles, Blake Valenta. Let's give all of our seniors praise for all they've accomplished. Grace Presbyterian Church is also blessed by many endowments. So we have multiple scholarships to award at this service today. The first is the Rusty Dubberly Award. Rusty Dubberly and his wife were charter active members of Grace. Rusty was one of the first youth leaders here at the church who devoted much of his free time to the youth, enthusiastically sharing his love for the Lord, Rusty unfortunately died at an early age, and so this memorial scholarship was created. 
The Rusty Deberly Award is given to a high school senior who has actively participated in the youth program through middle school and high school, shows care, concern, and love for others, who exemplifies a spirit of enthusiasm for the Church of Jesus Christ, and who has contributed to the life of the church. And this year's recipient goes to Sarah Davis. There you go. The Bob Toberman Family Scholarship recognizes a graduating senior, and this can either be a high school graduate or a college graduate. So remember this in four years. <laughs> who demonstrates an ongoing commitment to serving others in the model of the Toberman family legacy. Bob and Betty were active members of Grace for many years and were definitely the hands and feet of Christ in countless ways. Jane, their daughter, continues to serve in the day school and she is a treasured member of the staff who just completed her 40th year of service this spring. We celebrated her. This year, we are privileged to have three recipients who continue to model lifeless service. The Toberman Award is given to high school senior, Jake Bowles. <laughs> College senior, Grant Darrow. Is Grant here? Yes, Grant. Oh, Grant, thank you. And college senior Alex Fleck, whose mom is accepting the award on his behalf because he's already in LA. Thank you, Rocco. The Beth Broom Award is our third um, award for today. Beth Broom was an active member of GPC and a devoted teacher in our Sunday school program for many years. Beth passed away unexpectedly in the summer of 1996, and an endowment fund was established for her memory. You may remember when you received your fourth grade Bibles, this was from the Beth Broom Fund. There's also an award for a high school senior, and this is a high school senior who volunteers time and talents given above and beyond the church. And this year we are blessed to have two recipients. The first is Sophia Mabry Nada. And the second is Blake Valenta. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Our last um, gift from today is from the Harry Chase Memorial Fund. This fund was established in memory of Reverend Harry Chase, who passed away in 2005. Reverend Chase was a pastor, teacher, friend, and counselor to so many. He wanted everyone to hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ and to share it with others. The purpose of this fund is to support students attending seminary or pursuing degrees that will be used to enable the church to continue to spread the good news of Christ. This year's recipient is from, will be starting seminary this fall at Austin Seminary, and it's Sarah Rutherford. Her mother accepted her gift on her behalf because she is busy traveling and enjoying life before she starts seminary. <laughs> I would like to invite parents, small group leaders, session elders to come forward and lay hands on our graduates. And after service today, we have a special reception in the narthex to celebrate all that they have accomplished. So please feel free to step by and have a special treat to celebrate them. Let us pray. 
Loving God, as our school year has come to an end, grant us wisdom, courage, and joy in our journeys forward. We know the path is long and the course is treacherous. When we come to the crossroads, remind us of the wisdom we have learned so far. When justice evades us and lovelessness invades structures of power, give us courage to stand in defiance and fight for the voiceless. When despair and uncertainty threaten to overpower these graduates, grant them joy in their memories with school and church friends. When they come to the well, give them living water from which to drink. Lord, the world to us seems cold and hopeless. The burden of this generation is great, and often they are weighed down with sadness for those who suffer, for rights taken from their grasp, for a world filled with war and strife. We need you to not only guide them, but to hold their hand when the going gets tough, to comfort them when they cannot journey further, and to grieve with them when they lose their way. Be with these seniors, O God, in their joyous moments as well. When they accomplish new goals and reach new heights, celebrate with them. When they overcome despair through the love of community, be delighted in them. Lord, we welcome this new chapter in these seniors' lives. Bless them as they continue on their journey and help them to feel your spirit blowing them on the way. Protect them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations to each of you for all that you have accomplished so far. We are so proud of you. So, so very proud of you. And we can't wait to see where God is taking you next. Congrats. Our God has blessed us with so many gifts. Our God is so generous to us and gives us so many good things. Let us give of our tithes and our offerings with generous hearts back to God.
let us pray. We offer our gifts to you, Lord, with grateful, cheerful hearts. Thank you that you meet our needs on the journey, providing what we need when we need it, for breathing your breath into our very lives to encourage us on. Trusting you, we can share what we have with others, and we do this joyfully together. Today, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing once more together. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. A thousand tongues are not enough to say how great you of your majesty, the triumphs of your love. Awake my soul to see the glories of my God and King. Arise and praise the one worthy of the songs of a thousand. Break the power of all our sin, you set the captive free, you make the broken heart rejoice, new life the dead we see. Awake my soul to see the glory. My friends, I don't know about you, but every day the news seems to get worse and worse and worse. There's tragedy after tragedy, and I wonder, where are you, God? And then we have times like today, where we get to hear from our seniors. We get to hear how God has been moving in our lives. We get to celebrate with them. We get to rejoice with all their accomplishments. We get to sing and praise, and I think this is where you are, God. This is where your spirit is. I can feel it in this place today. And so go. Know that God is always with you. God is nudging you forward. Go with the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and every day. Go in peace, and may God go with you. Amen. Amen.